This is New Patreon series number 85A on the topic of exorcism and Yeshua. Part 1 He that is not against us is with us. The context In Mark 9 38 through 40, the following story is told. Teacher, said John, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we told him to stop because he was not one of us. Do not stop him, Jesus said, for no one who does a miracle in my name in the next moment can say anything bad about me, for whoever is not against us is for us. And again, that occurs in Mark 9, 38 through 40. This is a unique passage that appears only in Mark and Luke. Mark's Gospel is considered by most scholars to be written by or contain memorabilia from John Mark the amanuensis of Peter. An amanuensis was a sort of secretary who was bilingual <clears throat> and could translate from Aramaic, which was the language of Peter, into Greek for the benefit of his hearers. According to Eusebius and Ecclesiastical Histories, Peter had two amanuenses, uh, Silvanus or Silas, who prepared the first letter of Peter, and John Mark, who prepared the Gospel of Mark and accompanied Paul on his journeys. Mark 9, 38 to 40 probably represents an historical event because it derives from the memorabilia of Peter through John Mark. <clears throat> Mark chapter 9 and parallels in Matthew and Luke contain stories of Jesus doing exorcisms. This is taken from Luke 9, 37 to 43. On the next day, when they had come down from the mountain, a great crowd met him. And behold, a man from the crowd cried out, Teacher, I beg you to heal my son, for he is my only child. And behold, a spirit seizes him, and he suddenly cries out. It convulses him so that he foams at the mouth and shatters him, and no one can cast him out. And I begged your disciples to cast out, cast up it out, but they could not. And Jesus answered, O faithless and twisted generation, how long am I to be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. And while he was coming, the demon threw him to the ground and convulsed him. But Jesus rebuked, rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the boy and gave him back to his father. And all were astonished at the majesty of God. The same story is told in Matthew 17, Mark 9, and Luke 9. Thus it probably existed in Q soon after the crucifixion. So what was exorcism in Yeshua's day? It was a process of casting out the Elilim. The Elilim got their name from the Hebrew El Elim, little or useless gods, and are mentioned as far back as Isaiah, referring to the idols of Persia. After the Babylonian captivity, the Persian deities were demonized by the Jewish scribes. These were codified into a system of demons during the Hellenistic period, with each given a name like Beelzebub. Jewish exorcists used the names of demons to cast them out. They were, they, the demons, were essentially vampiric, like the Lamia and the Succubus and the Incubus. Like the man using Yeshua's name to cast out demons, the Jewish exorcist Eleazar, described by Josephus, used the name of Solomon to do the same. Josephus describes the process in the Antiquities of the Jews, 46. He put a ring into the nostrils of the demoniac, after which he drew out the demon through his nose and when the man immediately fell down, he abjured the demon to return into him no more. Using the name of Solomon and reciting the incantations which he composed, 
and when Eleazar wanted to persuade and demonstrate to the spectators that he had such a power, he set a cup or basin full of water a little way off and commanded the demon to overturn it as he went out of the man, and thereby he let the spectators know that he, the demon, had left the man. Now we're going to discuss the relationship between the Elilin and the Yetzer Hara. I've done a presentation on the Yetzer Hara in my previous um, PowerPoints. Now the Yetzer Hara is the evil inclination that lies in every heart. All human and other animate souls are constantly subject to dark forces through the evil inclination. Some people are more vulnerable or willingly make themselves vulnerable to obsession or possession by the Elilim by obeying the impulses of the evil inclination, such as selfishness. The Jewish exorcist drew authority from the archangelic allies of Solomonic magic to force the possessing Alila to give its name. Once the name was known, it could be commanded. Yeshua had intrinsic authority, however, over all dark forces without resort to Solomonic magic because he was such a powerful being. And Yeshua then gave authority over dark forces to his 70 disciples and he taught them to use it. Go to PC number 85B for the rest of the presentation. Thank you.